two million years after humanity's extinction, a mother gave birth to a worthless child before being struck by lightning, and the ugly baby lost all of his bodily parts except for his disgusting skull. Because on the day he was born, his father found God in a ghetto temple, but as God tried to run away, he killed him with his sword and tried to make a deal with the twelve heavenly demons, swearing to sacrifice his firstborn to become the strongest leader in the world. So after Dago told the midwife to kill his son and hide all the evidence, the fat ass witch made it to a river where she was about to drown the useless child. But when she saw a boat in the distance, she decided to cast him down the river instead, and as soon as the disgusting hag pushed him away, a legendary demon appeared to devour her. However, an ugly blind elder sensed the presence of the demon, and used his blade to slash it down with a single strike. Before realizing there was a baby in the boat, with God's ancient power radiating from his insides. On the other side of the world, a man dragged a pathetic victim to crucify him, along with all the other enemy soldiers they defeated. But when he saw his wife getting accidentally killed by his own knights, the man couldn't bear it anymore, and decided to isekai himself by passionately hugging the ground. However, the man somehow survived and became colorblind, but when he approached a mysterious boat, he saw the body of the dismembered baby that was still alive. Throughout the years, the man began raising the disgusting child, and even created fake limbs and skin for him. But he realized that the child couldn't feel any pain, and lacked all emotions. So he named him Hayekimaru, after the Japanese word for a hundred demons, and spent his entire life training him to become the coldest super soldier in the world. But after killing thousands of demons and being covered in their blood, Hayekimaru's godly powers activated, regenerating the leg he'd been missing. By the time he turned 16, the old man wished he taught Hayekimaru how to do anything except killing. However, Hayekimaru tried feeling his face for the first time, and hugged onto the man that raised him as if he was his father, before leaving him forever. For the next three billion years, Hayekimaru began traveling the world without ever eating, until one day, he saw a child called Dororo, getting beaten for stealing money from three oppressive men. But before the men left, Dororo launched a stone at their leader's eye, so the fatso began drowning Dororo, and ordered his men to bring the sword for killing him. As they walked away, however, they saw Hayekimaru in the distance, but he was looking past them at the demon he noticed in the river. Just then, the demon launched and devoured the fat ass with a single strike, so the other lackeys began running away. But the demon swallowed them up as well. As it was about to eat Dororo, Hayekimaru slashed its arm off and threw Dororo away before running to evade its attacks and destroy the bridge. The beast continued attempting to swallow him, but Hayekimaru continued slashing the foundations of the bridge, causing it to collapse as the monster was chasing him, and killing the demon underneath all the rubble. In that moment, Hayekimaru's mask fell off, and he regained his skin as lightning blasted in the distance, destroying one of the twelve demons. At the same time, Dago's second son showed his mother the dove he caught, but she couldn't stop missing her first son, and stared at the statue of the goddess that sacrificed herself on that day. Eventually, the two of them began traveling to a neighboring village. But along the way, Dororo realized that although Hayekimaru was blind, he was able to see the outline of their souls, and was able to find the demons by the red colors their souls emitted. Eventually, they made it to the village, but as they were about to sleep in the horse stables that night, a mysterious demon came to ring the bells of hell, and left without saying any word. The following morning, the chief took them to meet Lady Bandai, the priestess of the village. When they got there, the priestess apologized for her appearance, saying that she hasn't been able to use her legs after Tyrone blew her back out. But although Dororo thought she was beautiful, Hayekimaru felt the presence of a demon and began trying to attack her. However, Dororo held him off while the other villagers came to take him away, throwing both of them in prison. As Dororo wondered why he was trying to kill the hot girl, the blind elder revealed his presence, and said they had locked him away for the same reason. After all, he recognized Hayekimaru as the baby that was cast away, and revealed that he also had the ability to see the souls of the demons. Just then, both of them sensed the presence of another demon, and Hayekimaru ran to slash its arm off, before jumping inside a well. Together with Muni, they began heading down the secret tunnels until they arrived at the priestess's room, and Hayekimaru knocked her door down before she began revealing her true form. Immediately, Hayekimaru attempted to launch towards her, but she knocked him away with her tail, and she released all of her arms towards him. After closing the distance, he penetrated her eyes with his swords, but the village chief restrained him in the last instant, and told the demon to run away. 
As soon as he slashed the cloak down, Hayakimaru began chasing the demon throughout the forest. But Banai was able to trap him down with the bamboo sticks. Before she could kill him, the demon rung the bells of hell again. But Hayakimaru disappeared when she looked back and launched down from the sky to slash her head, eliminating her in that instant. As Banai revealed her hot form once again, she realized that one of the twelve demons failed in sacrificing him. But before she could keep talking, Hayakimaru pierced her face, killing her for the final time. The demon continued ringing the bells of hell before disintegrating, and when Dororo searched the ground, he saw thousands of gold coins that were buried. This was the money that Banai kept stealing from the adventurers she killed, and the chief revealed that this was the only way their village could continue surviving, so he sold his life to the demons in exchange for the gold. At the same time, two of the twelve demons were killed, restoring Hayekimaru's nervous system and allowing him to be able to hear once again. That night in the forest, the noises from all the animals overwhelmed him, but Dororo wondered how he could hear anything when everywhere was completely silent. So he wrapped a cloth around his ears to muffle the noise and suggested that they hunt no demons until he was recovered. Just then, Hayekimaru noticed a monster in the forest and a great bird flew between them. Immediately, he drew his sword, and as the monster returned, he narrowly evaded it. However, it flew towards them again, nearly snatching him up, and the noises from falling leaves distracted him, allowing the bird to knock him into the ground. As it returned, Hayekimaru managed to slash it, but the bird tried carrying him away, and he utilized the opportunity to wound it. But as it returned to end him, Muni appeared at that moment and cut it to pieces in an instant. Just then, Dororo noticed that Hayekimaru was spaced out and tried returning him to his senses, but he was pretty much dead on the inside. The following morning, as Hayekimaru woke up, he began hearing a singing voice and followed it to the river. As he arrived, he realized that the singer was a girl, and the purity in her soul drew him closer to her. As he tried to touch her, she discovered he was blind, but he nearly passed out in her arms and she noticed Dororo and Muni, thinking they were probably his companions. As they settled in an old abandoned temple, they realized that Hayekimaru was very sick from his injuries, and Muni said he was probably starting to become a real human. As Mio arrived, she told them to stay until Hayekimaru was recovered, and revealed half a dozen orphan kids she was caring for. Just then, the kids appeared before them, and Mio said they were survivors of the war. As Takibo decided to take charge, he commanded the others to leave and told Mio to get some sleep before her night shift. Later that day, as Dororo decided to meet Takibo, he offered to help him with his duty. But the boy turned him down, saying that he wishes to work as hard as his sister Mio. When Dororo noticed that Muni was starting to leave, he told him that he was going to find a safe path through the forest and would return afterwards. In Dago's village, a messenger told him that the Sakai clan were waiting at their border and that they were starting to run out of food as it has not rained in weeks. Just then, Mina appeared, saying that the past was starting to repeat itself. At the temple, Mio decided to check on Hayekimaru and discovered that he was burning up from a fever. Realizing he needs medication, she promised to bring him some healing potions while returning from her night duty. And just as she began to sing, he wished she wouldn't leave, but would stay by his side forever. Inside the forest, Muni discovered a path through the creek and thought it would make a better home for Mio and the orphans. However, he soon noticed the presence of a demon deep inside a hole and thought that this place wasn't safe after all. The following day, when Mio returned to the village, she realized that Hayakimaru was waiting outside and decided to give him the medication she brought. However, he tried telling her to sing instead, and Dororo said her voice would probably awaken his mind. As she began singing, Muni arrived, and as they settled inside, he told them about the area he found in the forest, and said that it would be a good place to hide when the war begins. However, he revealed that a great demon was already living on the land, and that it would only be safe when it was gone. Hearing his words, Hayekimaru began heading towards the forest and ignored Dororo when he tried to stop him. As Muni realized he was far from recovery, he decided to follow him for support. So with the men gone, Mio revealed that she would be working for both villages that were preparing for war, saying that it was the fastest way to earn more money. However, the boys thought it was too dangerous, so Dororo promised to follow her and protect her if she fell into danger. That evening, as he trailed her into the forest, he realized that her work was developing plot with the soldiers, and was depressed by what he saw, and the amount of things she endured every day. At the same time, Hayekimaru and Muni arrived at the large hole. As they spotted the demon, Hayekimaru drew his swords, but Muni realized he was still sick from his injuries. Muni tried suggesting that he waits until he's recovered, 
but the monster began drilling the ground, and the sand pulled them deep into the hole. After jumping off the rocks, Hayakimaru flew at the monster, and Muni slashed it from behind, forcing it to turn its attention. As soon as it was distracted, Hayakimaru stabbed its head, but the demon caught him, and began pulling him deep into the ground. Luckily, Muni managed to save him, but Hayakimaru began screaming from a terrible pain, as half of his leg was lost to the demon. That night, as Dororo returned to the temple, he came across Muni and Hayakimaru. As he noticed Hayakimaru's severed leg, he fell from the shock, and Muni revealed that it was eaten by the demon. However, when he realized that Hayakimaru was actually groaning from the pain, Muni told him that he had now also gained his ability to speak. In the morning when Mio arrived, she found Hayakimaru injured and wondered what happened. But Muni told her that he would survive his injury. As she began to clean his wound, Dororo noticed her scars and ran off at the memory of what he saw. A few minutes later, Takibo found him and wondered why he left. But Dororo thought it was better to keep what he saw a secret. As he asked if he has ever seen Mio at work, Takibo began telling him that his duty was to watch over the remaining orphans and that they were only able to stay alive because of Mio's sacrifice. At Dago's village, Tahamaru began demanding to be sent off to the battlefield. But Dago said he was still just a kid, and told him to have his mom teach him how to play with his small sword. I beg your pardon? As Mina appeared, Tahamaru begged her to play with his sword, but she thought he was a spoiled little brat, and ignored everything he said. However, Tahamaru realized she'd been only pretending to care about him ever since he was born, and wondered whose sword she was really worried about. He thought she was definitely hiding a secret, and hoped to eventually discover it. At the temple, the memory of the incident continued flashing across Hayakimaru's mind, and as he tried heading to the forest, he fell from his injury. But Mio hurried to give him her support. To help him relax, she tried asking him to speak, but discovered that he could not say a word, so she began to sing for him. As Muni spied on them, he realized that Mio's singing voice was calming the demon that was starting to appear inside Hayekimaru's soul. So as he began to leave, he told Dororo that he would stay around the forest in the meantime, and revealed that Hayekimaru's demon flames might one day turn him into a monster. That evening, as Mio began heading to work, she told Dororo that she noticed him the previous night, and said that this was their only means of surviving. So he decided to forgive her, and said that she was actually brave, so he would never hate her for sacrificing herself for all the other kids. Immediately, he ran up to the temple, happy to have finally made peace with her. At the temple, Hayekimaru began sharpening wood to replace his leg, but Dororo decided to feed him his meal, saying that it was the only way he would regain his strength. However, he hoped Hayekimaru would never become a monster, and told him that he was his only friend in the world. By the morning, Hayekimaru had fixed the wood, and was practicing with his sword. As the orphans admired his sword arms, they decided to show him several hidden swords, and Takibo revealed that they found them on the battlefield. At the same time, Mio began heading to work, but a soldier from the Ishikawa clan spotted her and thought she was probably a spy. On that night, with all the other kids asleep, Dororo realized that Hayekimaru had left the temple and thought he must have gone to face off with the demon. At the hole, Hayekimaru drew his swords and was ready for the battle. As he slid into the hole, he began dodging the demon's claws, and it started raining at the same time. As the beast bit off his leg again, he stabbed it right in the mouth and jumped very high before slaying it in an instant. At that moment, the rain stopped, and Dago's statue split in half. When Mio arrived at the temple, Takibo told her that Hayekimaru had gone off to fight the monster, so she hurried immediately. Just then, a bunch of Ishikawa soldiers arrived and followed her to the temple. As Hayekimaru and Dororo began returning home, the boy was happy to see his leg restored. But after hearing those words, Hayekimaru realized that the temple was burning, as the soldiers slayed the orphans without any mercy. When Dororo arrived, he discovered that all of his friends were dead, and the leader wondered if he was one of the spies. He said that Mio was spotted entering the enemy's camp right after leaving them, so he thought she was selling them off. Thinking he could save her, Dororo began running to her, but the man caught him and threw him to the ground. However, as he tried to end him, Hayekimaru sliced off his hand, so the men surrounded him immediately. At that moment, Hayekimaru discovered that Mio was about to die, and the realization sent him into a frenzy. So he stabbed the first soldier and began killing the rest of them as the anger overtook him, driven by madness and revenge. At the sight of this, Dororo remembered Muni's words and thought Hayekimaru might end up becoming a monster, so he stopped him before he could slay the leader, allowing the man to escape. 
As he revealed a pouch, Dororo told him that it was filled with seed rice, and said that it was Mio's dream to one day create a rice farm for the children, so she could feed them rice patties. After all, none of them had ever eaten anything except burnt rice patties after the war, so he told him to hang on to it and to never forget Mio's dreams. After hearing those words, Hayekimaru let out his first word and said, Mio, and they buried all the bodies before leaving the temple. As they resumed their travels, the only thing they kept on hearing was Mio's sweet voice singing, pushing them to keep moving forward in their miserable lives. When it was night, Dororo tried asking if Hayekimaru was hungry, but he only held on to the pouch. Before long, Dororo began hearing voices in the forest, and thought two lovebirds were probably developing plot behind the bushes. As he grew angry at the thought, he began hurling stones at the trees, but a basket nearly crushed him. Just then, he noticed a spider before him, and Hayekimaru rushed up the tree immediately. In an instant, he slashed the webs, and a man fell to the ground but Dororo realized that he has probably lost his mind. As Hayekimaru flew at the monster, he slashed it instantly, but it cast a web and bound him to a tree before escaping immediately. Later that night, as they spotted a village, Dororo suggested they stay there for the night, and the monster thought it was the best place for her to recover. When they arrived at the village, they discovered that they needed a pass to enter, and a guard told them that there was a kidnapper abducting the villagers. In the morning, a villager noticed the lady on the roadside, but she pushed him away and pretended to be afraid. As he noticed she was sick, he invited her to his home, saying he would offer her some food. However, she thought it was her chance to drain his life force and realized she could waste him like an empty doll. At his home, he introduced himself as Yajiro and wondered if she has a name. When she said that she doesn't have one, he decided to name her Ohagi. Believing she was hungry, he decided to serve her a bowl of rice, and she thought that it was delicious. As he wondered where she was from, she told him to mind his fucking business, and said that she would leave his hellhole once she regains her full strength. Just then, he began to leave, saying he would return when it was dark, and she thought he was a mysterious man. At night, as Yajiru arrived home, he noticed that Ohaga's sickness was getting worse, and wondered if she hasn't eaten all day. Right then, he spotted a cockroach, and decided to release it outside. At the sight of this, Ohagi wondered why he decided to spare it unlike every other human in his right mind, so he told her that every life was special. His words impressed her, and she told him that she has never met anyone like him. However, as they slept that night, she crawled to his spot, and tried to eat him out, but discovered that she was hungry for food, and decided to eat the rest of her meal, before going back to bed. She thought he was a special human and wished to know everything about him. When it was morning, Dororo was exhausted from scouting the village and wondered where the spider could be hiding. However, later that day, Dororo discovered that another villager has gone missing, but wondered how it was possible, seeing as there was no sign of any monster. That night, Yajiru realized that Ohagi has gotten even worse and told her that they have no doctors in the village. On top of that, they need a traveler's pass before she could leave, so he offered to sneak her outside. Meanwhile, Hayekimaru and Dororo were chewing on weeds for dinner, and Dororo thought they would definitely starve to death if they continued to stay in the village. At the same time, Yajiru and Ohagi began hurrying to the secret exit, but before long, they came across Hayekimaru and Dororo. Realizing who they were, Ohagi wondered if they were waiting to slay her, but this only made Dororo discover that she was the spider, and he commanded Hayekimaru to attack her. However, Yajiru decided to protect her, and said that he was actually the kidnapper, just then, the guards appeared, and threatened to execute Yajiru for sneaking people out of the village. Dororo tried saying that he found him first and deserves the reward, but the leader revealed that there was never a reward in the first place, and that it was merely a scam to make the people confess. As he commanded his men to capture them, Ohagi bound the men with her webs, and consumed their life force immediately. Just as Hayekimaru sensed her red soul glowing again, he drew his sword and tried to attack her, but she bound him with her cloak and ran away with her man. As Dororo freed him, Hayekimaru ran after them, and a guard called for the others with a whistle. Eager to escape, Ohagi cast a web to the top of the mountain and pulled them up. As Yajiru realized she had regained her strength, he began saying that he was probably useless to her now, but she told him that she wants him by her side forever. Yajiru wondered if she kills humans after draining their life force, but she told him that she always spares their life, but continues to suck their life force every single time. This was all Yajiru wanted to hear, so he offered himself to her, because he was tired of his lonely life anyway. 
Eventually, they arrived at the secret cave, and Yajiru told her to find her way to the exit, but she suggested that they escape together. After all, his identity was exposed already, and she thought he would never be safe here. However, just as he agreed, arrows pierced his body, and Ohagi realized that the soldiers had found them. As she grew angry, she cancelled the arrows and bound the men, immediately draining their life force. At that moment, she transformed into the spider and captured the others, but Hayekimaru cut her web. As he sliced off her leg, she knocked him away, and told Yajiru that she would not abandon him. However, when Hayekimaru was unwilling to allow her to escape, Yajiru asked him to spare her life, and said that he wants to stay with her forever, so Hayekimaru decided to leave her alone. The next day, they continued their travel, and Dororo noticed that Hayekimaru was starting to smile. A few days later, Dororo began wondering why Hayekimaru was not talking to him, since he had already regained the ability to speak. As they noticed some weird-looking people carrying a girl to the top of the mountain, Dororo thought it was probably a bridal parade, but wondered why the bride was sad. Just then, a boy slid down the mountain, hoping to stop the group, but the wind blew his arrow away. Before he could fire another one, Dororo stopped him, saying that he would not allow him to eliminate the beautiful bride. However, the boy thought he was a clueless moron, and told him that the girl was his sister, but was being married off to a monster. As he tried leaving, Dororo offered to support him, saying that Hayekimaru could defeat any monster. Before long, they arrived at the top of the mountain, and Saru revealed a dark mysterious cloud over their village. He said that the monster was called the Nakasergumo, and that it appears almost every day to devour their villagers. So to save their own skin, they began offering a girl to the demon, and managed to keep the village safe. However, Dororo thought it made no sense, and wondered why girls were specifically being offered to the monster. But even Saru had no idea. Thinking he could scam the fuck out of this loser, Dororo offered to rescue her, but said that it wouldn't be for free, so Saru decided to pay him with worms and a tiny piece of gold. As Dororo realized he could probably sell it, Saru offered to give him more of it if they succeeded. So he agreed to help him, and Saru introduced himself. A few hours later, when the other villagers had returned, Dororo and Saru knocked out the guards, and Saru decided to free Genie. However, his sister told him that she could not leave the mountain, as she was afraid that the demon would devour the entire village in her place. Saru tried telling her to save her own skin but she told him that her life was far less important than everyone else's. Just then, Dororo began telling her that they would slay the monster, and Hayekimaru drew his sword to prove he was ready. At that moment, the dark cloud began rising towards them, and the guards nearly pissed themselves. In an instant, they were sucked into the clouds, and their devoured bodies were dumped to the ground. As they heard a roar, Dororo tried telling Hayekimaru that the demon was inside the clouds, but his vision was surrounded by a wall of evil flame, before they knew it, a monstrous centipede descended from the clouds, looking to devour Saru. But Genie pushed him out of the way, and was swallowed in his place. At the sight of the huge monster, Dororo wondered if they even stood a chance. However, as it returned, Dororo tried warning Hayekimaru, but he still could not see shit. Luckily, heated water sprung out of a geyser, and revealed a ray of light in the darkness, scaring off the demon and the dark clouds vanished instantly. However, Saru was sad with his sister being killed, realizing he would never see her again. So Dororo decided to follow him home, but realized he was living in the mountains, and Saru told him that he lives on his own. As he wondered how they could avenge her, Dororo said that he has just the perfect plan, but revealed that Hayekimaru was probably useless at this point. At that moment, they realized that the cloud has expanded, and ashes began falling from the sky. As they discovered it was the skin from the centipede, they realized that it was growing even bigger in size. Seeing how massive it was, Saru thought they couldn't possibly stand a chance, but Dororo revealed that the sunlight was its weakness. So the following day, Dororo pretended to be a new bride and successfully lured out the monster. Immediately, he started running away, and as he dodged the centipede, he jumped into a hole. But he emerged outside to draw its attention and started running away again. However, as he slipped, the monster tried devouring him at that instant, but he luckily made it into the hole. At the same time, Saru was waiting on the mountain, and just as he spotted the monster, he launched a flaming arrow at the geyser, causing it to erupt into a mighty explosion, burning up the monster. However, just before the sun appeared, it quenched the fire, and released more fumes to cloud the area before rising high for the kill. At that moment, Hayekimaru drew its attention with a rock, and launched his arrow at the monster. As he fired another, and a third arrow, 
He rushed at it and slashed its face, causing it to crash. However, it was still alive, and he narrowly dodged its tentacle before getting knocked away. Dororo realized he could draw Hayakimaru's attention towards the monster, so he jumped down the mountain, landing on top of it, and screamed at Hayakimaru to follow the sound of his voice. As the monster hurried away, crashing through a rock, a stone knocked Dororo unconscious. Just then, Hayakimaru began screaming, desperate to draw its attention, but was knocked away. Even so, he continued screaming, and managed to stop the demon before it devoured him. As he took the onslaught, the beast threw him high into the sky. But Dororo directed him with his voice, and he pierced its eye, forcing it to emerge from the clouds, and the sunlight began molting its skin. Right then, Hayakimaru jumped inside its mouth and ripped it in half instantly, causing it to vanish. With the monster slain, Dororo was happy to have survived the battle, as they fell into a river. A few moments later, Saru spotted Genie inside the water and realized that she was still alive, so he was happy to be reunited with her. Right then, Hayakimaru began to groan and his fake nose fell into the water, allowing a real nose to grow in its place. A few minutes later, as Saru gave Dororo the remaining gold he promised, he realized that it was a rotten piece of food, and wondered how they would survive on this, but Genie decided to thank him with a flower. As they began leaving the mountain, Hayakimaru smelled the flower and said Dororo's name for the first time. When he heard that, Dororo realized Hayakimaru was starting to regain his full humanity. Later that day, as Hayakimaru sniffed a flower, he decided to smell Dororo's face, but he pushed him away and fell from exhaustion. As he tried to stand, he fell again, and Hayakimaru realized that something was definitely wrong with him. So he carried him to a nearby village and tried asking for help from a farmer, but the man ignored him. As he met another man, he tried telling him that Hayakimaru was really sick, but the man told him that he's not a doctor and decided to leave. Having nowhere else to go, Hayakimaru left him on the ground and Dororo remembered that this was exactly how his mother died. Luckily, a woman found them and decided to take them home. As Dororo regained consciousness, he thought Hayakimaru must have abandoned him and tried to leave, but she managed to calm him down. Just then, she realized that Dororo was actually a girl, but as she noticed the Manjushagi flower, Dororo revealed that it reminds her of her parents, and this made her sad. Six years ago, her father was the leader of a group of warriors who fought to eliminate the samurais for destroying their village during the war, but was led to a trap by her evil uncle to kill all of them. With all his men dead, one of the soldiers stabbed her father from the back, but he took him with him to the afterlife, and they watched as the village burned before them. Being the only two surviving members, her mother began caring for Dororo on her own. But as they traveled for weeks without any food, her mother passed out in a field full of Manjushagi flowers, and she begged Dororo to be strong and to survive until the war was over. So her words inspired Dororo to survive, and she told the woman that she would never give up. As she wondered how the girl traveled for weeks without any proper food, she told Hayekimaru that his companion was actually a girl. A few days later, as they began to leave the village, Dororo wondered if Hayekimaru has discovered that she was a girl but he merely ignored her secret. At Dago's village, a messenger began telling him that his abandoned baby may have survived, and that a commander in their army was attacked by a mysterious man with prosthetic arms. Hearing these words, Dago wondered if his son could possibly be alive. Later that day, a chief told him that it hasn't rained in two months, and he thought all their rice fields would begin dying from the drought soon. At the same time, another chief revealed that a new clan were preparing to wage a war against them, and Dago thought it couldn't possibly get any worse. So he rode off to his temple, thinking that Hayekimaru was definitely responsible for the broken statues, as he was starting to reclaim his body parts. Before his eyes, a mystical smoke revealed Hayekimaru, and Dago realized he was right after all. Meanwhile in the forest, Hayekimaru charged at a monster and slayed it in an instant. A few minutes later, as Dororo washed the blood off his clothes, she began suggesting that they visit the nearby village for some food. Just then, she noticed his pouch and wondered if it was his family's crest, but Hayekimaru only stared at it. At Dago's village, Tahamaru decided to ask the messenger about the baby he's been looking for, so the man told him that the baby disappeared 16 years ago. However, when he asked him why he was looking for the baby, the man decided to bite off his tongue and Tahamaru realized that the secret was probably very bad. So that evening, he decided to confront his father, demanding to know why he's been asking for a baby. 
However, Dago screamed at him to fuck off and told him to stick his ugly nose into his own business. The following day, as his men found him on the island shore, Tahamaru began telling them that his father probably thought he was still a kid and said that he must prove himself to everyone. At that moment, he noticed several villagers on the shore and decided to ask if they were under attack. One of the villagers told him that they were being eaten up by a monster inside the lake and said that they would never be safe with the monster alive. Tahamaru realized that this was his perfect opportunity to prove himself, so he told them that he would annihilate the monster, and his men followed him for support. That evening, as they began rowing their boats to the center of the lake, the fisherman noticed that the oar was stuck, and the boat stopped moving. At that moment, Tahamaru realized that the monster was already approaching, and just then, it emerged from the water, and the villagers thought it would make them its dinner. Immediately, they tied their boats to a rope, and successfully held it to the spot. As the beast grew angry, Tahamaru drew his sword and was ready to slay it. So he jumped off to another boat, and the monster crab tried to devour a villager, but he managed to escape. As Matsu fired an arrow at the beast, Tahamaru jumped on another boat and split its claw in an instant before Hyogo cracked its shell. Tahamaru tried going for the kill, but the monster withdrew into the water and they watched it vanish. However, it began stabbing their boats and Tahamaru realized that it was trying to sink them, so he commanded the men to pull the boats towards the shore. On the island, Matsu told Tahamaru that they could hardly defeat the beast inside the water and suggested that they come up with a better plan. Later that evening, he suggested that they throw explosives into the monster's mouth, saying that it would definitely blow it to smithereens. However, Tahamaru was unwilling to lose his men and said that he would come up with a better plan. Just then, he spotted something in the distance, and Hyogo raised him higher so that he would see better. At that moment, he discovered the perfect plan, and was certain that the monster was as good as dead. So the following day, the people began cutting wood and digging a new path around the island, and eventually created a wooden gate to seal all the water. When they were done, they decided to lure the monster with a boat, before sealing it outside. At Tahamaru's command, the villagers cut off the ropes, opening up the sluice, and the lake flowed into another area, leaving the beast exposed. As they prepared to slay it, the beast began roaring, but Tahamaru charged at it with his men, and dodged its claw before splitting its leg. As Hyogo sliced another, Mutsu fired arrows at it, and eventually nailed its head, weakening the monster. At this realization, the villagers began cheering, and Tahamaru sliced its body, so they began throwing stones at the beast. However, as Tahamaru tried to end it, the crab threw a rock at the gate, and he realized they were about to lose their advantage. So he directed the men to protect the gate, but the beast threw another rock that caused the water to start gushing. Determined to fight anyway, Tahamaru stabbed his sword into the ground, but the water carried away the villagers. Luckily, Hyogo managed to save them before they were eaten, and threw one of them to the island, before tossing the others. With the monster nearly devouring him, Tahamaru tried going for his rescue, but Hayekimaru rushed out of nowhere, and slayed the monster instantly before he slashed it. As Tahamaru wondered who killed it first, his men arrived, and pulled him onto their boat. Just as they rowed away, he noticed Hayekimaru, and wondered just how powerful he must be to slay the monster. Later on the island, Tahamaru demanded to know who Hayekimaru was, but Dororo told him to be grateful that they managed to save their asses, so he thanked him, but wondered why Hayekimaru was only staring at him. Dororo told him that he was blind, and said that he could only see with his soul, but she demanded their broke asses pay up for saving them, so Tahamaru gave her some silver coins. As Dororo wondered how they could find the nearby village they've been looking for, Tahamaru pointed towards his village. However, as they began heading towards the village, Hayekimaru remembered his soul, and wondered if he had ever met him before. Inside the village, as a seer noticed them, she began screaming that the demon child has arrived to destroy them all, before running away. At the same time, Dororo realized the town was very peaceful, and noticed that everyone was happy. At that moment, he saw Muni in the crowd, and wondered how he managed to find this village. A few minutes later, as they sat at a stream, Muni revealed that the statue of the demons were inside Dago's temple, and noticed that Hayekimaru's soul was tainted with the presence of demons, so he realized that he had been killing humans. As he began to leave, he warned Dororo to be careful, realizing the demon inside him may completely take over him. Meanwhile at Dago's palace, Mutsu told him that they were saved by a mysterious man in prostheses, and said that he travels across villages looking for demons to slay. Just as he revealed his name, Mina realized he was actually their son, and was overwhelmed by the discovery. On the other hand, Dororo and Hayekimaru began leaving the village, 
hoping to find the monster that was terrorizing the villagers. As they noticed the tall wall before them, Hayekimaru sensed the presence of a demon around it and said that it was really powerful. Just then, a boy appeared before them, nearly scaring the shit out of Dororo, and began saying that they would be killed if they tried to cross to the other side. As they noticed the Asakura soldiers, a neighboring clan who were at war with the Ishikawa clan, the boy revealed that they would shoot them once they tried to cross over to their land. However, Dororo was determined not to leave, and told him that they came to slay Bandon, the powerful monster that was terrorizing the area. Later that day, as the boy, Sukuroku, began to make soup, he revealed that this site used to be his home before the wall was built. They had stopped him from returning home, and said that the territory now belongs to the Asakura clan. However, he was bent on crossing to the other side, and said that he intends to reunite with his family. So Dororo offered to help him, and said that they would sneak him in at night. But he told him that demons always surround the area, and would devour everyone in sight. Even so, Dororo was not afraid, and said that her demon-slaying buddy would take care of the monster. At Dago's palace, Mina wondered where he was heading to, afraid that he intends to kill Hayakimaru to save his worthless village. She told him that he was being punished for sacrificing his own son 16 years ago, but Dago thought none of it matters, and decided to leave anyway. That night, as the Asakura soldiers left their post, the boys began hearing noises from the monsters. Before their eyes, a flaming demon descended from the sky, and they thought it was a fox. Sukuroku revealed that it was the Banman monster that was terrorizing everyone in the area. And at that moment, over a dozen flames appeared before them, and transformed into foxes. As a demon jumped at Hayakimaru, he slashed it at once and began slashing the other demons. However, the lead fox summoned the others, and more spirits appeared in the sky, flying towards Hayekimaru at the same time. As he slashed them, another demon bruised his face, so Dororo began throwing rocks from the side, causing them to vanish, and Hayekimaru slayed more of them. Realizing his opportunity, Sukuroku began running to the other side, but Dororo thought it was too dangerous. As he tried pursuing him, a demon narrowly missed him, but as it returned to devour him, Hayakimaru rushed in and killed it instantly. So Dororo hurried away, and the demons merged into a ten-tailed fox. As he dodged fireballs, the fox managed to pin him to the ground. Just as it tried to devour him, he kicked it away and slashed it, before a bunch of arrows scared it off, causing it to disappear. Inside the village, Tahamaru began looking for Hayakimaru, thinking he would help him to discover his family's secret. But noticed the seer. As she spotted him, she began to freak out like a useless nutcase, saying that the demon child has returned to slay Dago. As he demanded to know what she meant, she told him that it was the curse of demons, and that the cursed child has returned to curse Dago and the village. At the same time, Dororo was screaming for Sukuroku in the forest, but soon realized that he has been captured by the soldiers. At the wall, Hayekimaru realized that an army was before him, and sensed the power of the demons inside Dago's soul. As he asked who he was, one of the men began calling him a useless moron for speaking directly to Dago. In an instant, Hayekimaru knocked their torches and flashed to feel Dago's soul. As Dago realized that he was truly his cursed son, he tried to strike him, but he jumped away immediately. As he wondered how he managed to survive on his own, he called him a half-born demon child and commanded his men to eliminate him. So they launched arrows immediately, but he escaped to the other side and the men pursued him inside the forest, as he hid on a tree. He wondered what Dago's words meant, and realized he must see him again. On the other hand, as Dororo woke up inside a cell, she realized that she was now a prisoner for the Asakura clan. As she noticed Sukuroku, she wondered if he found his village, but he told her that his home has been destroyed, and that even his family were all probably dead. Hoping to inspire him, Dororo began telling him that they could travel around the world together, but a prisoner said that they would be safer if they could escape to Dago's territory. He said that the Goddess of Mercy was protecting their land, and that the demon was keeping the Asakura clan from going beyond the Banman wall. At that moment, Dororo noticed his crest, and realized that Hayekimaru has the same symbol on his pouch, so the man revealed that it was the crest of Dago's clan. Just then, she noticed the opening inside the cell, and thought it would probably lead them outside. However, when she suggested that they escape together, Sukuroku told her that he was too afraid, and the prisoner said they could never escape. Even so, Dororo was determined to survive, and promised to return for Sukuroku's rescue. So she began climbing up the rocks, but a guard spotted her and immediately called for backup. However, as one of the guards tried to fire an arrow at her, Sukuroku managed to stop him, and the arrows lost their aim as he screamed at her to escape. 
As she made it outside, she slipped down the rocks and fell into a stream. Meanwhile at Dago's palace, Tahamaru arrived home and demanded to know why Mina and his father fed Hayakimaru to the demons, but the memory of it broke her heart. As Tahamaru said that she was useless for abandoning her own son, Dago appeared at that moment, saying that it was the only way to save their village from the wars and famine that destroyed his people. Just then, they were warned about an intruder and discovered that he was Hayekimaru. As he noticed their souls, he realized they were probably his family and managed to block the soldiers' arrows. However, as they launched new arrows, he began running away, and Dago commanded his men to kill him. Hearing his words, Tahamaru tried saying that Hayekimaru should be spared, seeing as he was his brother. But Dago told him to get his empty brains out of his ass and said that Hayekimaru's survival would destroy their entire village. Inside the forest, Hayekimaru noticed Dororo as she came out of the bushes, and she told him that Sukuroku would soon be executed. At the same time, an Asakura soldier told the prisoners that they have declared war on the Ishikawa clan, as they thought the demon protecting their territory has been driven away, and said that executing them would be their declaration of war. At the village, Tahamaru and his men began making their way to the temple, and as they arrived, they noticed all the broken statues and realized that their seal with the demons would be destroyed soon. At that moment, a powerful wind began blowing them and eventually pushed them outside the temple. This triggered Tahamaru to take sides with the demons as he realized that saving his village was the most important thing to him. Inside the forest, as Dororo discovered that Hayekimaru's family were the lords of the village, she began saying that they would be offered a VIP treat once they visit the palace and Hayekimaru was hoping to see his mother again. At the Banman Wall, the Asakura soldiers launched arrows to eliminate the prisoners, but Sukuroku managed to survive. Immediately, the Ishikawa soldiers charged at them, and Dororo spotted the battle from the forest. Before they knew it, spirit flames began appearing, so Hayekimaru began slashing them as he rushed towards the battle. On the battlefield, a demon devoured a soldier, so the Asakura clan began running off, realizing they could not win the war. Just then, the Ishikawa soldiers spotted Hayekimaru, and Dago told his men that he was the demon threatening their village. As Hayekimaru noticed one of the soldiers who slayed Mio and the orphans, he grew angry at the memory, and was ready to annihilate them all. However, Dororo managed to hold him back, and eventually calmed him. Right then, Tahamaru arrived, and told him that he was his younger brother, and that their father really offered him as a sacrifice for the village. However, he thought it was the right thing to do and said that breaking the seal with the demons would ruin their village. To stop this from happening, he said Hayakimaru was now a demon in their land and must be annihilated immediately. So he drew his sword and decided to attack him. But Dororo thought this must be a very bad dream and hurried to rescue Sukuroku. At the same time, the brothers began clashing swords. But as Dororo tried freeing the boy, they realized that the spirit foxes were returning, so she tried biting off the ropes. As the spirits merged into a ten-tailed fox, Sukuroku tried telling Dororo to run away, but she screamed for Hayekimaru's help. Immediately, he sliced Tahamaru's face, and running towards the demon, he slashed it over a thousand times until it smashed onto the wall. At that moment, Mina arrived, revealing the broken statue of the Goddess of Mercy. As she began asking for Hayekimaru's forgiveness, she told him that she could not save him, and said that the entire village depends on his devoured body parts. However, she thought she could offer herself up instead, and he sekai'd herself before they knew it. At that moment, a glowing light appeared on the wall, and as it began to crumble, they all ran away from the site. Later at the crash site, Dororo wondered where they would go next, but Sukuroku's family appeared on the mountains, and he discovered they were still alive after all. So having no more business in the village, the companions began to leave, hoping to never return. However, as the weeks passed, Hayekimaru continued to remember his mother and couldn't even sleep at night. When Dororo asked what he was worried about, he told her that he wants to kill every single demon in the world, and began to leave, so she ran after him. On the road, as she tried telling him to get some rest, thinking he's probably been pushing himself too hard, he bumped into her and continued walking away. A few days later, as they crossed a bridge towards another village, Dororo told Hayekimaru that there's a hot spring nearby, and suggested that they soak in it. However, when she realized that Hayekimaru was only determined to hunt for monsters, she screamed that a monster was spotted close to the spring, successfully bringing him to a halt. Meanwhile in Dago's village, it had begun to rain again, and Dago was relieved that the war was cancelled but Mina was yet to regain consciousness. However, with the rain having returned, he thought it was a sign that the demons have not broken their seal, 
but wondered how much longer they would continue to back him up, seeing as Hayekimaru would not stop until they were all dead. Before long, they soaked in the water, and soon realized that even Muni was here, so he told them that they were probably destined to meet wherever they go. The following day, Dororo noticed a map that was carved on her back, and Muni said it was probably only obvious when her body was warmed up. Dororo remembered that her mother once revealed half of the map to her, and said that the map would lead her to her father's treasure. She had told her that she would figure out how to find it once she found someone she could trust, but Dororo never understood what her words meant and revealed that she totally forgot about the treasure. Realizing her options, Muni decided to ask what she would do once Hayekimaru successfully reclaims all his body parts. He thought the treasure would come in handy, and said that she could even create her own territory, and could live a happy life forever. However, he thought Hayekimaru would probably not be in support of this, and wondered if reclaiming all his body parts would make him happy forever. Later that day, as they arrived at the forest, they noticed an ugly ghost, and Dororo hid herself away. However, Hayekimaru thought they weren't demons, and one of the ghosts vanished before their eyes. At that moment, the huge ghost began approaching Dororo, asking for a motherly hug. But the girl was terrified at the sight of it, and it fell on top of her, nearly crushing her. As she tried screaming for Hayekimaru's help, he merely ignored her, saying that it was not a demon. So the ghost began following them, holding Dororo like its own baby, and before long, they arrived at a ruined temple, so the ugly ghost directed Hayekimaru to a spot. As he checked the sand, he discovered it was oil, and Dororo said that the oil was probably burned down. At that moment, the big ghost held Dororo once again, calling her mother, but the poor girl was only desperate to go far away from it. Just then, it vanished, and a strange man appeared before them. He told them that the forest was haunted at night, and said that it was very dangerous for travelers. As he paid his last respects to the dead, he invited them to his home for the dinner, saying that he has no desire to see them become ghost meat. However, Dororo thought his eyes were creepy, and hid herself away. As the man introduced himself as Sabame, saying that he was the lord of the land, Hayekimaru noticed a demon aura around his soul, but they decided to follow him anyway. When they arrived at his home, they realized that it was deep inside the forest, but a group of dancers welcomed them with a performance, and Dororo consumed her meal like she's not eaten in days. She thought Sabame was probably a kind man to offer them so much food, so the Lord told her that he welcomes every single traveler he comes across. Realizing her opportunity, Dororo decided to ask how the temple was burned down in the first place, but the dancers stopped at that moment, and all the ladies withdrew from the room. Dororo thought this was strange, but Sabame decided to reveal the story. A few years ago, a nun took care of orphans at the temple, but soon began to enslave them like animals, and forced them to work on the farms, before selling them off to distant villages. However, one day, a lightning struck the temple, and set it ablaze with everyone inside. When Hayekimaru wondered whose ghost was moving around the forest, the Lord told them that it was the spirit of the nun. Due to her sins, she was locked out of heaven, and he said she was always looking for new travelers to devour. However, that night, as they prepared to sleep, Dororo wondered if Sabame's story was really true, but Hayekimaru said it probably wasn't. Dororo said that the spilled oil on the sand proved that the temple was intentionally burned, and wondered if a demon would attack them to keep the secret safe. As they slept that night, a monster appeared on the wood, and Dororo realized they were about to be eaten, so she tried waking Hayekimaru, but discovered that he was deeply asleep. However, when the monster tried to devour them, he sliced off its arms, and it fell to the floor. As he tried to slay it, the beast spat silk at him, trapping his arms, but he broke it, and sliced it before it could escape. Desperate to survive, the monster spat another silk, but he went through it, and stabbed it deep in the belly. However, just as they thought it was dead, it began screaming, and the doors were blown open. Right then, a new monster descended before them, and Hayekimaru realized that it was a demon but it cast a strange dust to distract them, and carried away the beast. With peace restored, Dororo noticed that the dust was not harmful, but Hayekimaru suggested that she washes it off anyway. Outside the village, the demon transformed into a lady and told Sabame that they couldn't devour the guests, as one of them was the cursed child. She revealed that he has come to reclaim his body parts, but Sabame promised to protect her and the other monsters. The following day as they had breakfast, Sabame told Dororo and Hayekimaru to extend their stay in the village, saying that they would be safe here. Before long, Dororo arrived inside the village, and realized that all the villagers were very happy. Just then, a family invited her over, and a kid gave her a rice cake, so the granny told her that they owe their lives to Sabame. 
As Dororo tried asking what really happened at the temple, the granny decided to leave, and she realized that the farmers were staring at her like a creep. At the same time, Hayakimaru began trailing Sabame into the forest, and even followed him as far as he went. However, as he arrived at an open space, he realized that Sabame had intentionally lured him here, and he told him that he comes to this spot to have a view of the village. On the other hand, Dororo managed to find the storehouse, but wondered why it was built so far away from the village. She thought it was definitely strange, and wondered why the villagers were acting like a bunch of creeps. So she decided to look inside, but realized that the storehouse was filled with rice. She thought they were all probably hardworking people, and decided to leave, but stumbled on the floorboard. At that moment, she discovered that it was actually a hidden trapdoor, and decided to open it. Before she knew it, a villager kicked her inside, saying that she deserves to be devoured for being too nosy, and that they were only trying to protect their village. At the same time, Sabame began telling Hayekimaru that the village was his only home, and that he would protect it from every threat. He said that even the monsters were his people, and that he would protect them until his last breath, so he decided to tell him the story of his village. Sixteen years ago, his village was raided by samurai who escaped from the war, and turned the place into a wasteland. It was at that time that a powerful demon appeared before him, and offered to protect them in exchange for continued dinner. So as he accepted their offer, they began devouring the samurai, and eventually brought peace into the village. He wondered what Hayekimaru's true purpose was, and decided to ask him why he was bent on killing the demons. So Hayekimaru told him that he wants to reclaim every single one of his body parts. Inside the underground, Dororo tried screaming for help, but realized that she was basically hopeless of ever being found. As she wondered how she could tell Hayekimaru that she was trapped, several monsters appeared in the darkness, and she began running away for her life. Just then, a silk caught her ankle and tripped her on the sand. She tried pulling herself up, but noticed the bones before her, and the big ghost appeared before her eyes, stopping the monsters immediately. As Dorora wondered where it came from, the ghost tried telling the monsters to withdraw. However, when they tried devouring her anyway, baby ghosts burst outside and managed to send the monsters away. As one little ghost returned, she revealed the true story to Dororo, and she realized that Sabame actually slayed the nun before feeding the kids to the monsters. This realization made her sad, and she wondered why the villagers could be so terrible. But the baby ghosts offered to lead her outside. Inside the forest, as the beast awakened, Sabame revealed that Hayekimaru would be its lunch, and it appeared before his eyes. As the demons cast weird dust, Hayekimaru decided to hold his breath. At that moment, he realized that Sabame was just like Dago, and would sacrifice anyone for his own good. So he slashed at the monsters, knocking one to the ground and splitting another's wing. As Sabame tried checking the beast, Hayekimaru kicked him away, sending him tumbling down the hill, before stabbing the demon. However, it managed to fly away, and even pierced him with a claw, but he managed to free himself, and crashed into the forests. With the beast growing angry, it crashed into a tower, setting it ablaze, and shortly, even the entire village was on fire. That evening, as Dororo found Hayekimaru in the forest, he decided to reveal the entire truth to him, and they soon realized that the village was burning. At the same time, the villagers watched their storehouse burn and they realized that all of their food was gone with the flames. As they wondered how they would survive, they began fighting over the leftover rice, and Sabame realized that everything they've worked for was already destroyed. With his job done, Hayekimaru tried leaving, but his prosthetic leg limb shattered instantly. However, that night, he decided to hunt down the last of the demons. As he arrived at the center of the lake, the monster emerged from the water and carried him away, but he blasted a flame at its wings, burning it in an instant, before falling into the water. Just as he returned to shore, another statue broke, and little pieces of wood fell out of his back, allowing a real spinal cord to grow in its place. At dawn, as they began leaving the village, Dororo noticed the destruction, and realized that the villagers were all sad, so she began to wonder if they were truly doing the right thing, but Hayekimaru couldn't care less about them. As she remembered Muni's words, she wondered if killing all the demons would change anything in the world, but Hayekimaru could only think of slaying the next one. However, as he tried to check for Dororo, he realized that she was no longer by his side. Meanwhile, Dororo decided to take a different path, realizing that Hayekimaru would continue ignoring her forever. Just then, a group of mercenaries arrived, and she discovered that their leader was Itachi, the uncle that lured her village into their death. He told her that he's been looking for her, and demanded for the other half of her father's map. As she wondered how he managed to discover it in the first place, 
He told her that he was spying on her father when he was alive, and commanded his men to glance at her back. However, before they got close, she decided to reveal it, and they realized that there was no drawings on her. Even so, Itachi wasn't buying this, and said that she has probably memorized it or something, so he ordered his men to capture her. Before long, they started riding away, and Dorora was tied to the horse. As they rode through the forest all day, Dorora wondered where they were heading to, so Itachi told her that he was going in search for her father's treasure, and revealed that he noticed him sneaking through the camp a few years ago. At the time, he suspected that he was probably hiding half of their loot for himself, and even tried spying on him but he never discovered anything, and eventually gave up. However, he was now desperate for money, and decided to look for the treasure once again. After all, he had nothing more to lose. Luckily, he came across her mother's burial site, and managed to discover the map after digging her up. Hearing these words, Dororo grew angry, and tried charging at him, but she fell after being restrained by the rope. The following day, they continued riding up the mountain, and soon arrived on a cliff. As Itachi noticed the island before them, he thought it was definitely the X spot, and decided to cut Dororo loose. He told her that he would give her half of the treasure if she helped him find it, but she knew that his worthless face was worse than his lies. Realizing they needed a boat to cross the sea, they decided to visit the nearby village. However, they discovered it was a total wreck, and thought it must have been attacked by bandits. Before long, they arrived on the shore, but realized that the boats have been wrecked. Just then, an ugly weirdo appeared before them, offering to give them a ride on his boat. However, Itachi thought he was far too creepy, and wondered why the village was empty. The weirdo, Asura, told them that all the villagers have been slain by bandits, and Dororo thought he was probably lying, and tried telling Itachi to find a new solution, but he told her that this was their only choice. Just as they got on the boats, two sharks began pulling them towards the island, and the men were afraid for their lives. Asura told them that the sharks are his family, but Itachi thought he was definitely out of his mind. As Dororo wondered how he lost his arm, he revealed that he fed it to the sharks when they were hungry, and eventually fed them with every single villager. At that moment, Itachi realized that they were being pulled to an opposite island, and threatened to slay him on the spot. Just then, Asura summoned the sharks and commanded them to devour the mercenaries. Before they knew it, one of the sharks pulled down a boat, and they began devouring the men like a large chunk of meat. As Itachi tried to end him, a shark scratched his arm, allowing the weirdo to leave unscathed. He told the sharks to leave the rest of the men for their dinner and began moving towards the shore. A few hours later, as one of the men tried paddling away, a shark emerged and devoured the wood, making the men realize they were entirely hopeless. However, Dororo would not give up, and began telling them to wake the f*** up, because no one would remember their worthless lives if they died here. When the men began to wonder how they would escape, Dororo offered to lure the shark to the surface, so that they would kill it immediately. Before they knew it, she jumped into the water and swam deep inside. As she narrowly dodged the shark, she yanked the rope, so they began pulling her towards the surface. As the shark tried devouring her, she caught its face, successfully luring it out of the water, and the men stabbed it at the same time, killing the shark immediately. Realizing Asura would soon return, Itachi commanded his men to sail towards the island. So at dusk, as Asura arrived, he discovered that his shark has been slain, and hurried to the island. Just then, the men appeared before him, having lured him into the trap, and soon beat him to a pulp. When it was morning, the men began marching to the top of the hill, continuing their search for the treasure, and Dororo realized it may all be over for her. At that moment, Asura regained consciousness and commanded his shark to devour all the men. Meanwhile on a battlefield, Kujai continued fitting prostheses on bodies, determined to fulfill the promise he made. As a thief stole one of the prosthetic eyes, a demon devoured him immediately and knocked Kujai to the ground. Thinking he was dead, it jumped on an old man and ate him out at that moment, but Hayekimaru slayed it out of nowhere. At the sight of him, Kujai realized he was changed, and thought his abilities were terrifying. As they sat in the cave, he began to wonder how Hayekimaru managed to reclaim his body parts, and even learn to speak. However, Hayekimaru's only concern was getting a new prosthetic leg, and he told Kujai to help him fix another one. Unwilling to do so, Kujai tried serving him dinner, but Hayekimaru told him that his only desire was to get a new leg. However, Kujai decided to serve him dinner anyway, and noticed his pouch as it fell, so he wondered if Hayekimaru has met his family. As Hayekimaru revealed who his father was, he told him that he fed him off to demons, and decided to tell him every single thing that happened. Meanwhile in Dago's village, Mina finally regained consciousness. However, when the housekeeper told Tahamaru, 
he merely ignored her and began riding out of the village with his men. At the same time in the cave, Kujai learned about the entire story and realized that the existence of Dago's great village depends on Hayekimaru's life. So Hayekimaru told him once more that he wants the new leg. However, Kujai told him that he wouldn't fit him into another as he was afraid that he would continue killing the demons and eventually destroy Dago's village. He said that with every demon he kills, he was losing more of his humanity and thought he would eventually become a demon. He said that a new prosthetic leg would only speed up the process and decided to ruin it, saying that he could not save him. At that moment, Hayekimaru remembered that his mother had said the exact same words, and a landslide sealed the entrance of the cave. At Dago's palace, Mina began telling him that Hayekimaru managed to survive the demon sacrifice, because the goddess of mercy offered her head in exchange for his own. This was the only logical explanation, seeing as his head should have been devoured by the last demon. However, with the Goddess of Mercy now destroyed, Mina thought Dago's contract with the demons was now broken, and told him that their village would soon be destroyed. Even so, Dago thought she was overthinking it, and told her that the village would continue to be safe. However, as he arrived outside, his spy told him that Dorora was spotted on an island, and he thought that Hayekimaru was definitely with her, so Dago commanded that Tahamaru finds him immediately. Meanwhile, Tahamaru and his men arrived at an abandoned home, having learned that a demon was killing the villagers, and Tahamaru thought it was his duty to slay it. As he entered the house, they noticed a rat on the wood, and the monster rat flew at them, but Tahamaru cast it aside. They realized it was a demon, and Hyogo tried to squash it, but it nipped him and evaded Matsu's arrows before Tahamaru sliced its limb. In the cave, Hayakimaru began digging a new way out, and as Kyujai noticed his determination to slay more demons, he wondered why Hayakimaru was so eager to resume his hunt for them, so he told him that he must reclaim every part of his body. Just then, he punctured the wall and discovered he could see outside. Meanwhile in the demon-infested house, Matsu decided to spy on the demon and realized that it has over a thousand babies. Looking to end it, he aimed his arrow at the monsters, but the beast charged at him, so Tahamaru slashed another limb out of nowhere. As Hyogo tried to end it, the beast escaped, but Matsu pinned it to the floor. With the demon captured, Tahamaru suggested that they burn down the house, saying that it was the only way to obliterate the monsters for good, so they decided to do so. As Tahamaru began to leave, he told his men that he would protect his village, even from his own brother. In the meantime, Hayakimaru eventually made his way outside, and discovered a bunch of demons before him. Just then, one beast began charging at him, but he slayed the monster and destroyed the rest of them in a moment. At the sight of this, Kujai thought he may have raised a monster and wondered why he rescued him in the first place. Before long, Hayekimaru had slain all the demons and immediately stabbed the evil core, causing it to dispel and all the monster seeds began to vanish. By the following day, as Hayekimaru was ready to leave, he asked to know Kujai's name, but he told him that he didn't deserve a name as he thought his life was tainted with murder, so Hayekimaru began to leave. At the same time at Dago's village, Tahamaru prepared an army ready to hunt down Hayekimaru. On the other hand, Hayekimaru managed to acquire a boat and began sailing towards the island, hoping to find Dororo. On the island, Itachi and his men continued searching for the treasure, but the men soon began to wonder if they were even heading in the right direction. At the same time on the beach, the living shark began devouring the dead one and upgraded into a monster shark. When it was done, it began crawling towards Dororo, looking to make her its snack. However, as it tried to devour her, it bit into the tree and ripped it off as she managed to escape, before getting knocked aside. With the beast still hungry, it tried to eliminate her, but Hayekimaru arrived and stopped it just in time. As he slashed the beast, Dororo wondered why he came. But they soon noticed that the shark was starting to stir awake, so Hayekimaru told her that it was a demon. Immediately, he began charging at the monster and jumped over to the other side, but it managed to catch his wooden leg. Desperate to kill it, he stabbed its eye, and the monster tried shaking him off, but he continued stabbing it. As Asura tried running towards the shark, it smacked him away, so Hayekimaru jumped high and stabbed it really deep, eventually killing it. With the monster dead, Hayekimaru decided to rub heads with Dororo, and she thanked him for coming to her rescue. Right then, Hayekimaru started groaning, and as the wood fell out, Dororo realized that a new leg had grown out of him. However, with time running out, Dororo suggested they find Itachi immediately, so they began heading towards the mountain. Meanwhile on the mountain, Itachi and the men arrived at a cave, and he thought that the treasure was definitely inside. Eager to find it, two of his men entered inside, thinking they were about to become millionaires, 
But as one stepped on a trap, the place exploded immediately. Even so, Itachi thought he had it all figured out, and tried saying that he would definitely find the treasure now. Just then, they noticed Dago's ship sailing towards the island, and Hayekimaru realized they were definitely coming for him. Before long, they arrived on the shore, and Matsu told Tahamaru that they found Hayekimaru's boat on the other side of the island. This was all he needed to hear, so he commanded his army to eliminate Hayekimaru and everything else in sight. After noticing their presence, Itachi wondered why they came in the first place, but when arrows were fired at his men, he realized that they came to annihilate them all. So he began running away for his life, realizing his chance at finding the treasure was probably gone forever. At the same time, Dororo and Hayekimaru were running off to a safe spot. As two archers tried launching arrows at them, they knocked them out with rocks and continued running away. While Dororo began climbing up the mountain, she realized that Itachi and his men were already hiding here, and he told her that he still hasn't found her father's treasure. So Dororo began screaming at him to wake the fuck saying that their survival was more important than any money. But Itachi thought Tahamaru would find it and claim it as his own. As Hayekimaru suggested they create a distraction, Itachi thought he has the perfect plan. So a few minutes later, one of his men pretended to be a wounded samurai and told the army that Itachi was preparing explosives. Right then, a rock exploded and the soldiers hurried to the site. Utilizing their distraction, Itachi suggested that they hurry to the shore. However, as they began to leave, one of the men was killed with an arrow, and they realized that Matsu was aiming at them from the shore, before noticing Hyogo on the rock above them. At that moment, Tahamaru began approaching them, saying that Hayekimaru was the demon terrorizing their land and must be slain immediately. Angered by the sight of him, Hayekimaru charged forward, but Hyogo landed before him, cracking the ground with his weapon and the cliff crumbled at that instant. However, Hayekimaru managed to catch a rock and returned immediately. As he locked swords with Tahamaru, Itachi screamed for his men to run and began pulling Dororo away. At the same time, Hayekimaru dodged Hayogo's weapon and destroyed Matsu's arrows. As he hid behind a tree, he wondered how Tahamaru became so evil and vengeful like his father. So Matsu revealed that killing him was the only way he could protect his land. As he fired an arrow that pierced his back, Tahamaru decided to utilize this advantage, and attacked again, allowing Hyogo to break his sword. In the meantime, Itachi and his men tried sneaking around the mountain, but arrows pierced his men before they escaped. Before long, they discovered a line of statues, and Itachi revealed that this spot was marked on his map. As he started checking the statues, he realized that he could easily become a millionaire when he finds the treasure, but an arrow pierced his back at that instant. Afraid he would be captured, he flung his sword at the army, killing one of the samurai, but they launched more arrows at him. Luckily, Dororo hid behind one of the statues, but as it fell, it pushed off the rest of them, and they began sliding down the mountain, crushing the men immediately. At the battle, Hayekimaru evaded Hayogo's weapon and climbed up on a tree, but as Matsu's arrow missed, he flew towards Tahamaru with his sword, but Hayogo knocked him back and pushed him towards the rock. As he screamed for Tahamaru to end him, Hayekimaru kicked him away and backed him into the wall, saying that they are now his enemies, and they began clashing swords like sworn rivals. At the same time, Itachi realized he was about to enter Nirvana, but told Dororo that he hopes to see the treasure before his soul leaves his body. At that moment, they spotted Asura on a cliff, and he revealed that he came to Isekai everyone. Right then, he threw down his torch, and an explosion erupted, destroying the mountain and sending rocks crashing on the soldiers. As Hayekimaru escaped, Tahamaru commanded his men to retreat immediately, so when the dust cleared, Hayekimaru decided to search for Dororo. Meanwhile, Dororo and Itachi woke up inside a cave, and they discovered that the treasure was right before their eyes. However, as Itachi tried reaching for the gold, his soul left his body at that moment. So Dororo decided to pay her last respects, and told Hayekimaru that she has no idea what to do with all this money. When it got dark that night, they began sailing away from the island. By the following week, Tahamaru realized that all the villages were beginning to starve, and that epidemics were starting to spread again. Hayogo said that the demons were probably responsible, and thought they were being punished for failing to kill Hayekimaru. However, Tahamaru thought only the demons could reveal the truth, and suggested they head for the Hall of Demons, where all of Dago's statues were kept. Meanwhile, on the far side of the world, Dororo realized that it was fall, and wondered why this was the first time she's ever noticed. As they rested for a moment, a man appeared on the mountain, wondering if they came to search for demons. When Dororo wondered who he was, he told her that he came to look for the same demon. 
So as he began leading them away, he revealed that his name is Saburota and said that he's been hunting the demon for over six months. He told them that it was a powerful beast and revealed his scar as proof because after it ate his mother out. He's been waiting to get his revenge ever since. However, Hayakimaru didn't believe a single word he said and decided to lead Dororo away. Before long, they arrived on the top of a mountain and Saburota told them that the beast always shows up here. Just then, it appeared on a rock and Dororo realized that this monster was not like any they have ever fought. However, as Hayakimaru discovered that it was actually a demon, he charged at it immediately and the demon charged back at him. As he dodged its fist, he leapt back, but soon realized that the serpent tail was about to devour Dororo. In an instant, he rescued her and blocked Saburota's attack, making him retreat. Dororo thought he must have lost his mind, and wondered why he was siding with the demon, so he revealed that he was its servant, and said that he offers everyone as a snack to even the loss of his mother. Just then, the beast began charging at them, but Hayekimaru jumped out of its way, causing it to smash into the rock. Before they knew it, the cliff broke and the rocks crumbled to the ground. A few minutes later, as Dororo regained consciousness, she realized that her arm was stuck in the rubble. As she tried to pull it out, they discovered that water was starting to spring out of the ground and realized that the place would be flooded in only a matter of time. Hoping to save her, Hayekimaru tried to pull out her arm. But as he fell back, Dororo realized that his fake arms were far too useless. Even so, Hayekimaru would not quit and tried pushing the boulder. But in only a short time, a pool formed around them and his cast began to break. Afraid he would not stop, Dororo tried telling him that she would escape on her own. But more water started gushing and nearly overwhelmed her. Desperate to save her, Hayekimaru pushed even harder until his cast completely broke and Dororo began to drown. As his desperation increased, Hayakimaru tried smashing the rock, but even this was futile. However, Muni appeared just in time and stabbed his sword into the boulder, cracking it and rescuing Dororo immediately. He revealed that he was just within the area and was happy to have made it here just in time. However, Hayakimaru had no time for chit-chats and began to leave, abandoning his fake arms. As he arrived on the mountain, Saburota wondered how he managed to survive, but Hayakimaru told him that he was here to annihilate the demon. Immediately, the beast jumped on top of him, but he raised it with his swords and slashed it at once. As the monster retreated, Hayakimaru began approaching it and slashed it again. Desperate to stop him, Saburota flew with his sword, but he blocked his attack and cast him aside. Without hesitating, he jumped on top of the monster and sliced its face in half. At the sight of this, Saburota wished he was as powerful as him and thought he could have saved his mother with a similar move. When Hayekimaru tried to end it, Saburota tackled him to the ground and told him that he wishes he could have been a better warrior. Right then, the demon devoured him and vanished before Hayekimaru could slay it. Before his eyes, it unleashed its wings as a powerful aura surrounded it and a weird face grew out of the demon as it flew towards Hayekimaru. He stood his ground, determined to slay it. A few minutes later, when Dororo arrived on the mountain, she discovered that the serpent tail had been cut off, and as she followed the trail of blood, she noticed that the demon's body parts were all over the place. Just then, she realized that Hayekimaru had totally annihilated the beast, and even his sword was pierced into Saburota. At his final moment, Saburota realized that Hayekimaru was not human after all, but he slashed his head off. However, no body part grew this time, so he began stabbing the monster, hoping to kill it again if it wasn't dead already. As Dororo tried to stop him, he began screaming for his body and continued stabbing the beast like it was a large chunk of meat. Meanwhile, Tahamaru and his men arrived inside the Hall of Demons, and before their eyes, another statue began to crack, leaving only one standing. Right then, Hayekimaru began to leave. When Dororo asked him where he was headed, he told her that Dago was the last demon and that he needed to kill his father to finally become human. Watch this next video, till next time my fellow legendary plot masters.